Shawn Michaels, in a little while, you're gonna find out firsthand what it's like to pay the tax man. And when I get done with you, you're gonna be the heartbroken kid. IRS, I know what it's like to pay the tax man. I do it every April 15th. But now I'm gonna get a chance to do what every red-blooded American would love to do, and that's smack the tax man around. Tonight, you, my friend, are gonna have to pay the heartbreak kid. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another review for Monday Night Raw. This one is from July 17th, 1995. As you heard there, some words from IRS and Shawn Michaels who are going one-on-one -on -one tonight. I don't know what it is, but you give that same dialogue to anyone but Shawn, and it's going to sound stupid, but somehow he manages to make it work. The tag team champions come out for the first match. They are taking on some enhancement talent. Yokozuna drops the leg on the back of the jobber's neck, and Owen locks in the sharpshooter for the win. Nothing else happening after the match here. And after the In Your House report, Jean-Pierre Lafitte taking on a jobber. I usually skip these squash matches, but I've been impressed by Lafitte, so I actually watched this match. Some guys were born too late and could have worked in the 80s era, but Lafitte was born too early and would have been great in today's era. i never seen a PCO match. I know back when the Quebecers were having matches, I think I might have said something like PCO and like I like to work or something like that. I was completely bullshitting. I don't know why the fuck I said that. Like, I know who PCO is. I know what he was doing. And, like, I've seen clips and highlights, but I've never seen like a full PCO match. Basically, what I'm saying is I was bullshitting back then because... I had no reason to say that I was a PCO fan because I wasn't really a PCO fan, if you get what I'm saying. I'm a fan of his work and what he can do at the age that he's at, but at that time, and even now, I was not like a true PCO fan. I don't know why I said that, so if you want to call me out, go ahead and call me out. But Jean-Pierre Lafitte, he was pretty good during this time, and even during the Quebecers, I gave him his props. Because like, imagine if a 1995 PCO was on the Indies today, tall, big, can wrestle different styles, forget about it WWE AW New Japan they would snatch him up quick but Sean picks up the win after a swanton bomb another decent showcase from him then we get a vignette for Fat 2 who we were all told was a wild Samoan but they now tell us that he's from the hoods of San Francisco I don't know how to feel about this because I gave them shit for trying to make us forget about Jean-Pierre Lafitte being in the Quebecers and him now being a pirate so as much as this makes no sense that they're changing the background for Fat 2, at least they kept his name and acknowledged his head shrinkers gimmick. So you tell me if this makes sense to you, and I'm going to go with whatever you say. Then they play the music video for Jeff's song again. Third week in a row that they show this. I think they're making sure that if you didn't listen closely the first time, that you start picking up on the fact that it doesn't really sound like Jeff Jarrett. It's either that, or they're making sure that they get the most out of the money that they spent for the song and the music video. Next up, we have the match between Shawn Michaels and IRS. A little bit into the match, Shawn goes after IRS on the outside, grabs the tie, runs into the ring, and then hangs him out on the top rope with the tie. You would think of all the times that they've done this to him, that Irwin would stop wearing that stupid tie, or maybe he would like wear a bow tie so they couldn't do it, but no, Irwin still does it, so he gets what he deserves. Shawn gets sent to the outside, and then he tries to get back in the ring with a sunset flip, pin but IRS kicks out and continues the offense. IRS does the thing where he holds the ropes during the abdominal stretch. God damn it, I can never get that on the first try. The abdominal stretch. I don't know why I always want to say abdominable. But he gets him in the abdominal stretch. The ref sees the ropes moving but DiBiase on the outside tells the ref that it was him shaking them. They do eventually get caught but that was some good heel work there. Got the crowd involved which is always good especially in these smaller arenas. IRS makes his way to the top rope, and I don't know what he was going for, but Sean gets the foot up. Vince asks Lawler if he likes it when someone's foot goes into someone else's mouth. Sean nips up, goes for the comeback. He tunes up for the kick, but IRS reverses it and hits a shoulder tackle. IRS sends HBK into the corner, and Sean leaps away, and when IRS turns around, he gets hit with a super kick, and Sean picks up the win. Pretty decent match for a Monday Night Raw. Not too much interference, and an actual clean finish. Now Sean looking to win the Intercontinental title at the pay-per-view. Then they throw to the guy who's been shilling the WWF shop products. He's standing ringside. And Sean is going back up the ramp. And he kisses the girl who's modeling the Razor Ramon t-shirt. Sean was like 30 during this time. So I hope that the girl was at least 18. Because she looked pretty young. I hope I didn't call this out and cause HPK to get cancelled here. After someone does the research. 
But moving on, we get some more footage of Jerry Lawler at Isaac Yankum's office. Mr. Yankum reminds the patient while he extracts a tooth. Lawler says that Isaac is going to do the same thing to Bret Hart. They add another layer to Dr. Yankum's background as Lawler tells us that before he was a dentist and a wrestler, he was also a drill sergeant in the Marines. He's a big guy. This is wrestling. You couldn't just have made Isaac Yankum a bodyguard or a backup for Jerry Lawler. You didn't need to give him this gimmick or all this background so unnecessary, but whatever. Next up, Kama Mustafa picks up a win over a jobber. There are still emo people sitting ringside, intimidating Kama on behalf of The Undertaker. And before I move on, is emo a derogatory term now, or can I still use that? Then we get an interview in the ring. Vince McMahon introduces the WWF champion, Diesel. This crowd is fully behind Diesel. He gives us what he says is a Don Pardo impersonation and gets his friends to... Come on down! That didn't sound anything like Don Pardo. These guys will be on Diesel's side during the Lumberjack match at the pay-per-view. He role plays being Sid in their match and runs down scenarios. If Sid goes to the outside, Bam Bam is going to set him on fire. Why? Because I'm a wizard. And Shawn Michaels will hit him with a little chin music. Vince is holding the WWF belt this whole time, and he does a subtle heel turn as he introduces Psycho Sid as if he was like the manager, like catching Diesel off guard. But then he turns back into a face because Vince prods Sid to get into the ring to go face to face with Diesel. And now the entire ring is surrounded by all the lumberjacks. They come to a standoff, but Sid backs off. All the good guy lumberjacks get in the ring and celebrate doing nothing as Raw goes off the air. Not a terrible episode. We had the one good match between IRS and Sean. Jean Pierre Lafitte in another decent showcase match. Tag team champs got a win. And the final segment wasn't great, but it did introduce us to who the Lumberjacks for Diesel were going to be. And they didn't have the two guys in the main event touch, so they're saving that for the pay per view. So I'm going to give this, even though we've seen them touch before, but you get what I'm saying. So I'm going to give this episode a good grade. They did enough to keep interest for the pay per view, at least for me. After this, I hope they're done with Sid and Diesel. I can see them stretching it out another month because Sean still needs to get his revenge for when Sid took him out. So maybe they'll do a tag match or something there. But yeah, I'll give you guys some of my thoughts on the next review on the In Your House pay-per-view. But until then, I am out.